Hello, everyone. Happy Thursday night to you. This is the Unstoppable Singer, formerly known as the Pandemic Proof Singer, but we're in a new chapter, so we've got a new name now. I'm your host, Danielle Tucker. I am a singer. I'm a vocal coach. I'm a lead singer with the Mighty Untouchables Band. I produced and hosted the Pandemic Proof Singer Summit 1 and 2, and now I'm producing and hosting the Unstoppable Singer. The Unstoppable Singer is this live interview style show where I talk to and follow the lives of real life professional singers. These singers have made incredible achievements in their lives and careers. And we cover everything from voice work, making money, booking gigs, songwriting, recording, session work, and, and a lot more. We just kind of pull the curtain back on the industry to take a little look. Uh, with everything that we have been through, we will strongly focus on going from just surviving to thriving in the business, uh, working on safeguarding our careers, building strong, healthy bodies, minds, and open hearts. So if this sounds like something that's for you, then stick around because I have an amazing amazing guest tonight. I'm so excited to be talking to her again. We're going to get all updated with Whitney Shea. Um, in her hometown of San Diego, Whitney has been honored to win five San Diego Music Awards, two for Best Blues Artist, two for Best Blues Album, and one for Artist of the Year and a San Diego City Beat Magazine Best of Award. Abroad, she's toured extensively throughout Europe and South America and was nominated for a National Blues Music Award in 2019. Her latest release on Roof Records, Stand Up, debuted at number one on the Billboard Blues Charts and also reached number one on the Roots Music Report. She's received high praise from music critics calling her um, a future blues icon. Um, one of the next, what they say, one of the next best things in soul music and the epitome of a rising star. Um, I couldn't agree more. She's got tracks that have been placed in TV, film, including shows on NBC, Fox, HBO, Bravo, BET, Hulu, and Tyler Perry, uh, Tyler Perry's A Medea Family Funeral. So without further ado, let me bring on Whitney Shea. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. It's so good to see you again. You know, one of these times we got to do this in person. Yes, we do. <laughs> I think that that is going to be the next phase of this whole thing is us actually all being in the same room together. Yeah, because, well, Danielle, you and I have talked now, but I still don't think we've ever met in person. We haven't. Right? No, we haven't. But I feel like I know you because know. we've talked online so much and I come in on all your things. So Yeah, yeah. It's going to happen for us soon. I promise. It we'll make it happen one way or another. This year, 2022 <laughs> is the year. Yes, yes. But thanks for coming and meeting me online tonight, even though you've, are, you've got a gig tonight. I do. But you know, you know how it is. I'm sure you probably have three gigs tonight or something. You're always working too. <laughs> I got I got ki kids to take care of tonight. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that 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 is like three gigs. It That's is, yeah. Thing, so, yeah. Well, God, it's good to see you. Tell me how. Um, give us the 2021 year in review. How did things go for you last year? Kind of coming back onto the scene, and then tell us how 2022 is starting out for you. So, um, it, it's funny. Um, I'm sure you kind of experienced this too. Like at, when things kind of opened up. Um, especially like in summer of 2020, you know, beginning of 2021, I think things started to come back, but summer of 2021, things really started to flood back, I think. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to tour again for the first time. Um, I was able to do a couple festivals in the East coast. I was able to do, um, my first tour in Europe since all of this craziness. Um, mm -hmm. so when I started, uh, and when I signed with roof records, one of the things that I was going to get to do was when I released my new album, I was going to do a whole European tour in 2020. Well, we did like about one third of it. So we did 26 shows in Germany in February, 2020, we came back March 1st and then two weeks later, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. So all of the stuff that we had had booked kept getting postponed like over and over and over. So after it being postponed like three or four times, we finally got to do the rest of the European dates in September and October, um, in 2021. 
So that was really cool. And then with Omicron, it was crazy because it was like we got in there and then it shut down again, it seemed like. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, navigating this whole new journey um, of doing music in the COVID, you know, era. I mean, it, it seems like things are getting back to normal finally, but then, you know, you'll hear something about, you know, a new variant or something. So it's, it's always, I think, going to be a pivot at least for the next year or so I, yeah. we'll see and mm -hmm. then with all the um you know the war in ukraine there's all all kinds of stuff going on there so yeah. it's it seems like musicians we're just you know especially touring musicians we're all trying to figure it out you know day by day and everything has kind of become last minute where you know before i feel like i had stuff really far in advance and now like i'll have it booked but i'm like We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know until I have the plane ticket until I'm getting on the plane. So, <laughs> so true. It's, it's so hard to project into the future and really have any, uh, I don't know, just, it doesn't feel stable. You know, I, I yeah. feel it's very hopeful. There's so many great things happening, so many positive things, but I think we're just kind of like living in this constant state of what's going to happen next. And, yeah. um, you know, it's, that can be, you know, obviously there's really scary aspects to all of that, but at the same time, you know, if I'm looking for a silver lining, it's that we, we are just kind of forced to be like in what's happening right now, mm -hmm. you know, and be kind of like happy with that and just more focused on that and not worry too much, you know, into the future. But that's such a good point. I mean, really like that's one of the takeaways that I had for the pandemic really was like just being present in general and then like really just focusing on balance. I mean, I'm sure you have kids. I'm sure you probably really enjoyed being home with your kids and finding like <laughs> new ways to, you know, oh, sorry, my cat decides she wants to be in the Hello, interview like, no every problem. time I'm on camera. <laughs> um, but yeah, like really um, for me, it was uh, it was kind of an eye opener. I had only like just worked before and done like 300 gigs a year and craziness, um, but now you know things have shifted. I'm still gigging like a ton, mm -hmm. but you know I I started um, during COVID because we couldn't work. I started going back to school online mm -hmm. and learning graphic design, and that's something I'm still continuing to do right now. I'm still gigging full time, but I'm taking two online classes in graphic design, and that's been like a really cool skill to you know, figure out something that's super useful in our line of work. I mean, yeah, absolutely. posters and everything. I redid my website, you know, it's, it's great to have that, you know, little asset in my tool bag to, to use as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. And then, you know, trying to get ready for a new album is like my next goal for 2022 i really want to record later this year so trying to figure all of that out where to fit it all in yeah awesome i know you've got so many things going on i have like a million notes in front of me so we <laughs> don't have any shortage of stuff to talk for, about but um so with with 2021 i, I don't know um m most everyone that i have talked to when things kind of got back underway it was like this just massive <laughs> wave of things that came in. And most of us were so, I don't know, eager to get back at it that we just, yes, yes, yes. You know, accepted yeah. every little thing that came along. Was, was that your experience too? And and how did it feel for you? Were you just all about it or was it overwhelming or how that go? Um, I was, well, it's funny. And at the beginning of 2021, I, it was a little scary for me because I took, um, I was taking, because we weren't able to work, I was taking like six online classes. Mm -hmm. And so then when in like, I, it was like in the middle of the semester, like March or April, like when everything really started to come back last year in full force, I was like, whoa. So I got really overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. um, but I've been good about like taking little, you know, I went to Costa Rica for a week um, and rewarded myself because I figured, well, I know I knew in the summer and fall and winter, like everything was going to be crazy. So I figured, okay, this is the only time. So I've tried to like do that, like really schedule time and just, you know, I don't know about you, but lately I felt like, especially this year, when I do get overwhelmed, I find like these little bursts of like, okay, this is my taking care of business day. Like Monday, yeah. I did that. I just spent the whole day on the computer doing emails and booking and updating my website and calendar. And, you know, I mean, I think people, most people don't realize that like, 
as artists, we're doing it all ourselves. I mean, it's yeah. different, a little different if you have a band and you can, you know, everybody can kind of pull their own weight. But for me, you know, for Rebecca Jade, for a lot of us, we're solo artists and we're doing all of the promo work. I mean, I have a record label, so they do some of the, take a, a little bit of the bulk as far as like promotion when I have a new album and stuff like that. But as far as like updating my website, you know, sending in, um, doing my accounting, booking, all that stuff, I'm still doing all that. So it's a lot of work and it, it feels like, yeah, t- this last year, it was kind of like, oh yeah, this is how we do it again. You know, after we had been off of that, you know, pace for so long, it felt like it took a little bit catching up again mm-hmm. to figure out how to do it. Yeah, I know. Most people don't realize that you, you wear all the hats in, in a typical situation. I mean, some some people have the, you know, luxury of having a team, you know, around them. Um, but it it's, and I always like to talk about this too, when it comes to, um, how much we get paid as artists and what, what goes into those rates that are set. And, and as you progress in your career and, and, you know, uh, being confident about what you charge, because, um, yes, you, you roll into a venue and you spend several hours waiting for the show to start to begin with (laughs) and then doing the show and, and everything that happens after that. So there's all the time that goes into that, but countless hours during the week, just, doing the learning, the prepping, the promoting, the creation of the graphics, like you said, you know, it it, it is a ton of work coordinating the gigs, getting the band ready, all these things. It's, um, it's an enormous amount of work that goes into it. Yeah, (laughs) it, it definitely is. I mean, it's interesting that you talk about rates, like, especially, you know, it's interesting. I feel like I'm in an interesting place in my career because locally I'm very well established, but like now, as far as like touring, you know, internationally and, you know, doing stuff, I'm, I'm starting to book some festivals internationally. And now it's before when I've done it, um, I've kind of hired musicians there, but now I'm like putting together the bands there and, you know, having to book the flights and do that stuff. And so it's a lot more coordination and, you know, it's, it's interesting now at this point um, because it becomes a lot more logistical work and you have to kind of consider fees a lot more when yeah. you're putting together a tour, when you're hiring musicians, when you're booking flights, you know, there's yeah. a lot more that goes into it versus like playing a local gig, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, and it, it's an interesting um thing too that we go through as artists too especially like you were saying saying yes to everything Mm -hmm. um there was a guy who came to one of my gigs recently and he said i remember seeing you during the pandemic we were playing um i was playing with my guitarist laura chavez outside of the cardiff seaside market because that was like one of the few gigs that there were and it was outside and he was like i was thinking oh man this girl like must be so down on her luck you know playing in front of the (laughs) the and then he's like and then i looked you up and you have all these accolades and i said well that was like one of the only gigs that there was you know in all during the pandemic so yeah, it was funny that he said that, but it's it's an interesting thing that you kind of have to consider as you start to progress in your career is like the gigs that you do take, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, saying no it, it is almost, it's a difficult thing because as musicians, we never want to say no. We, we always want to take every always. opportunity, yes. but at the same time, like there comes a time in your career where like, it's important to say no to your brand to make sure things are consistent to make sure that when people come out to see you they expect a certain level of things and one of the things i think i've I've tried to do you know as we got into the pandemic is before i used to just you know play with everybody and do things but now like really especially like i only want to do gigs with the people that i work regularly with mm-hmm. unless it's like a special thing that's going to be rehearsed and put together but i just don't want to do a gig that's like haphazard anymore because I just I really have been doing this for a long time and I just I I want to I want it to be good for my audience you know I really Mm -hmm. want that level I mean I'm sure you know like Mighty Untouchables is the best I'll say variety cover band in San Diego and you guys have 
you know, establish that because it's the same musicians all the time. It's, yeah. you know, you guys are consistent and that's a thing about building your brand is consistency. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's so true. I know you, that I'm glad that you mentioned that because there really is this weird layer of stress that goes into a gig. If you, if you're a sub on a gig or if you have to oh, hire yeah. an accompanist you haven't worked with before, it's that feeling of you have no idea what you're walking into. And when you're, when you have kind of progressed to that level where you're so accustomed to everybody showing up, having done their homework or just the band being tight in general, you know, right. together, you, you just, you, you want that. You always want that in every situation. And, um, I know that I have grown to like absolutely hate that form of stress of just, yeah really not being sure what I'm walking into. And I think that's probably one of the, one of the criteria I've developed nowadays, at least as to like what I will take and what I won't take. And, um, tell me what it is, what it is for you. For, for me, obviously money is a factor in all this, yeah. not always that it's for me, it's, um, it comes down to money or it comes down to like, who is on the gig? Are these right. people I love working with? And you know, if it is, you know, that money has nothing to do with it at that point. And like, you know, what kind of time commitment is it going to be? What kind of an experience is it going to be? Or, you know, it, um, is this an audience that what I do is relatable to in any way whatsoever? You know, but what are those determining factors for you? Like if, you know, I'm sure you get a million calls all the time, you know, to come do this and come do that. What, how do you make those decisions? Yeah, that's a really good point. Like as far as, yeah. Um, money the the people that i'm playing with um mm -hmm. like you said that the, the audience thing is very important actually mm -hmm. because you know occasionally like i've really tried to to stretch my wings and be versatile and do a lot of different things but at the same time like i know my strengths i know mm -hmm. i'm not like you know uh ariana grande you know i'm not trying to be a pop singer mm -hmm. and that's i i try to set expectations that's another mm -hmm. thing like recently i got called for a gig and they were like oh well we want you know recognizable music top 40 and i'm like okay i'm just gonna tell you like that's not really what i do like there's i know a lot of people who do that really well like if you want me, like specifically what I do is like high energy rhythm and blues, soul, jazz, like anything under the roots umbrella. Like I do some recognizable pop songs, but like if you're looking for top 40 radio hits, that's just really not me. And I've kind of, you know, before I, I, I kind of had this attitude like, well, I could do it. I could, I could sing this. I could do whatever. And it doesn't mean that I can't do that, but it's that I feel like I shine my best at a certain thing. And I've been doing this long enough to know that. And I want to, again, consistency with your brand. Like that's mm -hmm. a thing that's important to me. And I've kind of become known for a certain thing. And the cool thing now is that I'm writing my own music mm -hmm. in this genre. Like it really kind of cements me in this set even more, but like also opens me up to a new audience because it's original music. It's, you know, I get a lot of times young people who are like, oh, I didn't think I liked blues but I like what you do. Mm -hmm. I never, I tried not to call myself a blues artist because like, I'm not doing traditional Chicago blues from the 1950s, you know, and I love that stuff, but that's not really what I'm doing. I just like to say like, I am doing rhythm and blues or soulful music. And, and because I say like a lot of the roots genres are under this big umbrella that, you know, a lot of sub genres kind of fit into. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like, I don't know. It, it's, it's such an interesting conundrum, like trying to be versatile and, and keep yourself open to opportunities. But at the same time, like, as I'm trying to become more of an original artist, trying to like, really like it's, it, they're two totally different worlds, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. that's another thing is like playing local gigs. You have to consider that like oversaturating the market you know, and like mm -hmm. touring, like what you want to do when you get to a certain point, that's yeah. two totally different career paths. And I'm somewhere in the middle, you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a really good point. That is a really good point. Yeah. You've got to, at some point you've just kind of got to make that choice that you're going to go one way or the other. Yeah. 
Oh, but I, I, I'm just, I just don't think that that feeling of, you know, I want to do everything ever goes away. I know <laughs> I just, you, just, you just get a little wiser about it. And, um, if my husband's listening to this, he's probably laughing right now going like, Oh, you, yeah, you're so wise about <laughs> the way you spend your time. <laughs> Cause he knows I, I, I'm like that too. I just, I want to do all the things. We want to um, be good at everything all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but why not? You know, that's what life is about. Is it so much to to ask to want to dominate as a singer, just the world? I mean, come on. <laughs> I think that's, I think we should all, like there's a, enough room for everyone to do that. All yes, time. there is. Absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Oh my God. Well, so moving into um, 2022, things are looking pretty good for you. I mean, you're, um, you're nominated for yep. a San Diego Music Award for Best Blues Artist. Yeah. That's amazing. When does that all go down? When does that happen? So they're going to be April 20th. And I'm <laughs> actually going to be gone for the first time <laughs> ever. Oh. I'm going to be gone. I'm going to be on tour, actually. So oh, that's awesome, it's yeah. a good excuse. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's like the Music Awards are one of my favorite events because it's just so nice. I actually played at the Rolando Street Fair this last weekend, and it was almost like a mini music awards because there was the Surefire Soul Ensemble played and also um, B-side players. So there was just so many musicians that came out, and it was so nice to see everyone. And that's one of the things I love about the music awards, more than just the awards themselves, I mean, which are great, but just getting to catch up with people that you don't get to see, like, except for one event a year. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's the best. Just the hang. And I'm so sad. I'm going to be gone. Oh. Well, you're going to be enjoying yourself a lot. So hopefully that'll take your mind off of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be back oh, for the next round of awards. <laughs> yes. Hopefully Fingers okay. Crossed will be nominated next year again. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's it's so awesome to, to be in such a supportive, incredible music community that we have here in San Diego. Like, People don't realize how special it is here. It is. It we really, really is. Super, a lot of talent, but like I, I had a friend from Brazil who was visiting a couple of years ago and I brought him to, I think it was one of the, um, they, they used to do those shows at the rabbit hole that Carissa and Lauren and Sandy used to all sing on. I can't remember what, Rhythm and Booze. Uh-huh. Um, and there were just so many musicians who came out and he, my friend was amazed. He's like, wow, this is like a whole scene. I said, I know, like, mm -hmm. this, it's amazing. We have this incredible supportive community where other musicians go see other musicians, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I know we do. We've got, we've got, um, it is not well known and, you know, maybe we shouldn't let the cat out of the bag too much, but it is, it's like this hidden gem that you, you just wouldn't really think of. And I think, uh, one of the things that I think goes into it is because we are such a, um, a tourist spot. Mm -hmm. There's so many gigs available. So many. There's so much work to go around for, you know, everybody. I know it's hard to say that coming off of COVID, but just, you know, generally, historically, there's so much work. And so I think that that, that really eliminates that hardcore feeling of competition, but just more like, mm. you know, at one point or another, we all cross each other's paths and, and you know, and become friends and just want to support everybody in the community. And I just, I love that vibe so, so much. And I, we're really super blessed to be, we're, we're blessed to be here. Yes, we are. Good yeah. weather, good people, good music, you know. I know. Couldn't ask for more. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of, um, community and great musicians. Chuck Phillips is in the comments oh, saying hello. Good evening, hi, Chuck Phillips. Ch I just booked Chuck. Chuck's going to be playing with me in May. Yes. Oh, Excellent. I'm I think I'm going to see Chuck this weekend too. <laughs> Are you? I'm like, yeah, you play with him all the time. <laughs> yeah. He's awesome. That'll be great. Um, God, where do we even start with all the things that you're doing here in 2022? Let's start with um, going to Europe. What's that? What's the okay, so I've got a couple um, tours. So I'm going to be doing um, a festival in Germany and a festival in France in July, which is going to be kind of fun because I'm going to play. It's like 4th of July weekend. So I'm going to play the 1st or 2nd of July 
and then fly back. And then I'm going to be playing with my group, the Decadames with Cassie and Tanya at Moonlight Amphitheater on 4th of July. So I'm going to like go to France or go to Germany, come back. And then two weeks later, go to France for another festival. So it's going to be a little rock star life, which will be fun. Yes. <laughs> and then um, actually next month, I have uh, five shows scheduled in Europe. Um, so we'll see. Like, that's one of the things that I was saying, like, we'll see because, you know, with all the uh, tension in Europe, uh, it, it yeah. seems a little crazy to go. But um, I think it's going to be a great tour. And I think mm -hmm. the festivals and everybody's excited about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely hoping for the very, very best and, and um, want that to happen for you for sure. Yeah. With all that going on, um, where do you see, where do you see uh, fitting in the new album? When is that going to happen? Is it scheduled or is it just kind of like in the works? It's kind of in the works. I I'm like, hopefully I'm hoping like to have it done in the fall, like, or at least go in the studio by the fall. Um, but I need to get on writing it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been a little, I don't know. I, I have written some stuff, but I feel like I do much better under pressure. So mm -hmm. like, I think if I set like a date, like we're recording at this day, yeah. I think that's when I like really get the ball rolling. Um, when I have, I don't know if you're a procrastinator like me, but that's how I work. So I, I do. I, I, I act well to the pressure as well. <laughs> I'll stay up all night and I'll get it done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing like a little fire under your butt to get you going. But. Exactly. Yeah. Um, have you kind of uh, visioned any envisioned anything for the album or, or kind of have some ideas brewing on it? Yeah, I think I'm going to record it here, which is okay. going to be really cool um, because it's besides my first album, that'll be the first record I've done here. Um, my mm -hmm. last one I did in Austin and the one before that I did in the Bay area, but I really am enjoying playing with my band here. Um, and I've, I've, we've really like become so tight the last couple of years that I, I really want to lay down a record with these musicians and kind of take advantage of all the amazing guest artists that I like know in San Diego to have on the record. So um, mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking, of doing things a little bit more stripped down um, as far as maybe no horns on this record. Check, no hate, I love horns. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I've had horns on all my other records and it's just, it's really like hard to tour with horns. So I'd like mm -hmm. to do a record that I can tour with, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, ideally like the five piece band with guitar, keys, bass, drums, and me, like that's kind of what I'm, and then, of course, have some guest artists, you know, doing some harmonies, maybe a duet or two. And yeah, yeah. but that's that's about all I have worked out. I have a couple songs. I have, you know, maybe a couple title ideas and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to give those away yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going to come together. It's going to come together. Yeah. You know, I, I always think about you um, because you – you know, you, you've put in so much hard work into your career and then it was very apparent, you know, to everyone following you that, that it was paying off, you know, you, yeah. th great things started happening for you, um, and, and just really took off, but it wasn't short lived. You have kept it going, you know, and, and it does, there's no sign of like any, you know, anything in your career declining for you, even through the pandemic. So what, what do you kind of attribute to that? What do you feel like um, has been behind just keeping the whole thing going? Well, for me, um, oh God, I think really being raised like by a single mother most of my life um, who ran her own business. Yeah. Um, you know, I was like working with my mom from a young age. Um, I think just kind of learning that work ethic. I also like grew up with animals and kind of living the farm lifestyle, you know, when you kind of grow up like that, I mean, you live in, well, you were in Ramona, so you know, like that kind of lifestyle Yeah. when you grow up, you know, with property and, and working on the ranch and stuff like that, it's, it's a lifestyle that you just like, you get to work, you just do it, you do what needs to be done. And when something comes along, like even a pandemic where it just halts everything, I mean, 
I, I was never one to like just sit down and even during the pandemic, like I was applying for a bunch of grants and small business loans. I was taking classes online. Like I never stopped, yeah. um, you know, and I, I don't know if that's a good thing or a, a bad thing, but it's just the only thing I know how to do is just, you know, work hard. And I'm lucky that I guess it's, it's paid off in a lot of ways just cause I just kept at it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, it's, it's interesting now because looking at it on the other side of COVID it's, it's very interesting, um, that you say, like, it seems like things are going because some days I just look and I'm like, I'm not doing enough. I'm just like, oh, I need to be doing this. I need mm -hmm. to be my career. I'm looking at another person and they're going so high and I'm just like staying at the same place. So mm -hmm. there's always that comparison and, and it, social media is, is difficult. Like with the imposter syndrome, feeling like, yeah. man, I'm just like not good enough. I'm just never going to get there. But like, it's really just, like I said, consistency and the tenacity that you just have to keep going. Mm -hmm. You just got to keep your focus on it, your eye on the prize, and hopefully eventually it'll pay off. And, you know, for me, for a long time, my, my goal was to tour in Europe. That was mm -hmm. like, that's what I want to do. And then now I'm doing it. And so now, like, I guess my next goal is to, like, play festivals and do more, you know, consistent touring like fly out dates you know that's like really what i'd like to do so and more prestigious gigs i guess um so yeah so how i go about that is you know anybody's best guess now i'm like trying to figure out you know it's it's almost like now that i've reached a certain level in my career it's almost like starting over nationally mm -hmm. and internationally again so again it's just going to be putting your nose to the grindstone and just working hard and being consistent mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's great. You know, when you have that, just that natural drive um, to want to keep going and you have just enough of a vision down the road for yourself that uh, it, it is, it's just, it's kind of like that motivating factor where um, you don't get complacent with where you are. I'm sure you enjoy where you're at and you celebrate yeah. that um, and feel good about it. But um, I, I'm glad that you, you know, added in the whole comparison things and having those days and everything. Cause I was curious with, you know, when you, when you do experience success with all the stuff that you're doing, um, once the celebration is over, do you ever, you know, run into those feelings of like, oh, I've, I've got to, the next thing I do has to be like 10 times better than oh, what I did before. And <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're the hardest on ourselves. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm already like, oh, well I did this the last time. So I've got to like promote, I got to work harder. I've got to, you know, I need to be releasing a video like every month, you know, and it's sometimes I feel like when you, one of the reasons I feel like I have found success is because I haven't stopped. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like just getting started, like, believe me, there are things that I've had in the works, like video editing and things that I haven't gotten done that are like on the back burner. But I feel like it's always easier if you just get them done to move on mm -hmm. to the next thing. Like if it's, as they say, an object in motion stays in motion, an object at rest remains at rest. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. Like if you are just, you know, procrastinating and not doing this and not doing this, and it just keeps piling up, piling up. It's so hard to just get motivated to mm -hmm. stay on track. And if you can really just keep on top of yourself, finding, you know, everybody has their own ways of doing things regarding, you know, booking and writing and scheduling. Some people work really well on a schedule, like every day, nine to 12, this is going to be my writing time. This is going to mm -hmm. be my booking time, my whatever time for me, like, I find it in spurts and maybe that's not the best way to do it, but like it's worked for me, but working for when, you. I, yeah. when I do it, I like, I definitely go really hard and we'll do a whole day of it. But yeah. Yeah. God, that's such great advice. I, I love that you explained how that, you know, how that works for you too, because um, I, I can definitely, you know, relate to that feeling of, you know, having, accomplish something. And then that, that kind of like that little like dip where you're like, Oh my God, do you know, what am I going to do now? You know, yeah. I have no idea. And, and then you just start, um, it's, it'll stifle your creativity totally. because you start trying to manufacture something 
to one up what you've done before, whether rather than just letting it be your natural flow state of creativity and just letting that in rather than the it's got to be better than the <laughs> last thing, you yeah. know? And, and I like that she said just to kind of keep powering through that because that just, that's just going to be there, you know, always. Yeah. And it's not a race. It's not a competition, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing we have to remind ourselves. And especially like we've all been through a crazy last couple of years, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's important to be gentle with yourself and like realize like, mm -hmm. no, like, you have, you know, responsibilities, kids, life, whatever, like everybody just needs to like, also remember, okay, you're one person, mm -hmm. you, you can do what you can, you know? So mm -hmm. that's also important to reflect on too. Yeah. 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 And also, you know, when you have had great success with an album or project or whatever, um, it doesn't always necessarily mean that you're not going to have some things that come out and tank, you know, and yeah. that's okay. Yeah. You know, as long as you can just kind of keep doing your thing. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many projects I've gotten involved with that seemed like a great idea at the time. And, and I look back now and just cringe and, you know, whatever, but you know, it's in the past and, and it, and you always learn something. There's no there. mistakes. There's only learning experiences, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. I know. Just got to keep it coloring through. <laughs> when you and I, before we went live with this, um, we were talking about the fact that this, doing this show too, I wanted to come back in September <laughs> to get it done. But in my mind, I had so many ideas that I wanted to um, improve, and, you know, try some different things. Uh, I need, I felt like there were certain things that I needed to have in place. So I kept putting it off and putting off, but it was always, I just, I just knew that, you know, I wanted to do it. And then I, I just recognized that one day I'm like, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. Line someone up, <laughs> get online and start doing the damn thing again, or else you're never going to get going again. And I think it is important just as, you know, as creative to you definitely keep that a momentum going. I went to the CD baby conference a couple of years ago and the, the panel that sticks out in my head above all of them was this one, um, where this woman talked about the quote that she said was perfectionism leads to procrastination, which leads to, Oh, what was the, the third thing? But basically like if you're trying to be perfect all the time, mm -hmm. you're just going to keep procrastinating and then you'll never do it. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's more important sometimes to just get it out there and get it done and like not worry about that. You need to, you know, yes, you want it to be good. You want it to be consistent. But like, if we're so worried about every song you write, every thing you do being like absolutely curated to perfection, like you might not do it. You know, this is yeah. good. I'm, I'm listening to my own advice right now. Cause I have a yeah. video. I really need to finish editing right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear you. You know, I, I think I'm curious to know, um, some of the things that you've done, like touring Europe and everything, I would imagine years ago, that was probably something that you saw as like this dream where you're like, oh my God, that would just be amazing to do something. And now you've done it like multiple yeah. times. And now you're kind of have this vision um, for doing festivals and just like kind of taking things to um, the next level. And then soon, you know, when, once, once you're there, you're, you'll, you'll look back and be like, yeah, the European tour thing, it's, you know, it's just something that I do, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, where do you, or where do you see, what's your vision for like five years down the road or, or if, or if everything just fell in place for you perfectly, are, you know, do you feel comfortable like sharing what is that, What's, what's the I'm not good with these five year plan you. things. I'm always like, I, I feel like every time somebody asks me the five year plan thing, I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's changed for me because a couple years ago, I would have told you that I wanted to go live in Paris and um, tour all the time. And mm -hmm. that's, but like as I get older, like, I don't know, like my priorities have shifted things of like, you know, the idea of, you know, I'm in a long-term relationship now, like 
the idea of settling down, like buying a house, like that's something that seems like a little more appealing than, you know, being gone all the time. So I, I, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting question because I feel like two years ago, it was such a different answer for me than it is now. Mm -hmm. Um, because now when I talk about touring, even now, I don't really want to be gone 365. I really like my home. I really like my friends. Mm -hmm. I really enjoy my life. And I really like have found during the pandemic, an incredible work-life balance that I never had before Mm -hmm. COVID. And, you know, one of my friends, um, Ed Kornhauser, who's a pianist I've worked on and off with for 10 years, um, Ed and I talk about because, you know, like me, he is probably one of the busiest or the mm-hmm. busiest musician yeah. in San Diego. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was, I remember December 2019, I had like 32 gigs in December, which oh was like gosh. insane. It was insane. And like, don't do that. Like, if you're saying, like, don't do that. <laughs> I will highly recommend not to. Do that. He had like 45. Wow. Okay. And like, he had hand problems after that, you know, the next mm-hmm. month. And him and I have had long conversations about Ed. Sorry if I'm sharing anything personal, but I, I think he's fine with it. But like, it's, um, you know, it was something that we've talked a lot about, like balance now, you mm-hmm. know, like finding balance in life that we just like we're working before. Cause that's what, what you do. And I still love my job and I love working, but I've like, I enjoy having nights off now. Whereas mm-hmm. before, like, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And now I'm like, cool, I'll have a date night. I'll go to dinner. I'll like go to a concert. I'll do something. I'll cook. That's one mm-hmm. of the things I never did before COVID. Mm-hmm. So uh, going back to it, like my five-year plan now is a lot different. Like I still want to release music. I want to do a lot of things, but um, I don't know. I just have a different approach i guess to my career than i did two years ago so Mm -hmm. it'll be it'll be an interesting thing moving forward to see like where that leads me career wise yeah i think that's a great place to be just kind of coming to that place in your career where you're not you you're you're embracing in the impermanence of you know uh, of it and and i think that um sometimes like early in our careers when we're so uh I don't know. We have a vision for what we want to do. We've got a goal and everything. And if you don't meet that exact thing, you know, it feels like, like such a failure, but I think the more experience you get in life and you get, you know, you get going down the road that, um, you realize that things that you wanted, uh, five years ago are just like radically different than they are today. And if you can kind of just stay open to those things changing, I think it keeps life a lot more exciting and it keeps your career feeling fresh and, you know, and it keeps you motivated and everything. And kind of like what we were talking about earlier, it kind of goes back to like the power of saying no, Mm -hmm. you know, like as you get further along in your career, you learn to be a little more picky and choosy. And like, I think that that's a better place to be in. Of course you have to do the work to get there. Yeah. But when you get to a certain point, like then you're able to enjoy that balance a little bit more, you know, you're able to do things that are, you know, maybe better for soul. I mean, I got to tell you, like, I love touring in Europe, but like that tour I did in September and October was pretty brutal. Like we did, mm-hmm. you know, I think we had one day off in like a month, you mm-hmm. know, and like the other days off, the other four days off, there was two days when we drove in a van from Sweden to Switzerland. It was like 15 hours in each day in a van. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it was pretty yeah. brutal. Like it was driving you know, between five and 10 hours in a van every day to Mm -hmm. play a gig that night to then go to a new city the next day. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like amazing and it is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Playing music in different cities for new people, like, and especially playing your own original music. It's an amazing feeling. And Mm -hmm. I am like so blessed and so grateful, but it's hard work. Like don't let anybody like tell you it's not. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. It's so true. It's so true. Uh, we just had a couple of people jump into the comments, but um, I don't see your name. So type your name in the comments so we know who it is. Uh, someone saying that they're glad to catch up, even if they're late. That's okay. Better late than never. And somebody saying, uh, Whitney's always on the go, and I love the energy. Oh, yeah. You do have wonderful energy. <laughs> 
you. Yes, yes. So um, tell me about a couple of these shows that you have coming up. I know I know you just did that amazing um, 27 Club show. Oh, yeah. Recently. I know that had to have been incredible. Oh, um, so fun. Oh, my yeah, God. Tell me about the be- other dates that you have coming up. I, I don't know why I put my font so small. So, oh, 16. <laughs> You've got Six String Society tonight, right? Oh, tomorrow. No, oh, it's tomorrow. Okay. What's today? Thursday? I, I can't even remember what day it is. <laughs> You're like, uh, we both don't know what day it is. Can't help you there. <laughs> Saturday. We only know when, where, what gigs we have what day, right? Day at a time. Saturday <laughs> night, we're doing the Mardi Gras cruise, which is um, one of my favorite events all year. Um, it's I always say that about my favorite events, but like I have a few that are, this is one of them. Mm-hmm. So this is a cruise on the Bahia. There are eight bands playing. Um, the oh. Flory Brass Band, Nathan James is playing, um, Andy Lowdown Lewis, this guy, Pyatt Pun, um, the Titan Ups, um, the, the Ass Pocket Whiskey Fellas. Nice. And, I love it. Um, who is, oh, uh, the Zydeco Mudbugs. There's a Zydeco band and then my band. Um, so eight bands, it's like a whole night we go out on the bay and everybody plays music and everybody dresses up in like Mardi Gras outfits with beads and, oh, it's so fun. That sounds amazing. I I can't wait. That's one of those, you know, like I'm so, these are the gigs that I'm glad to get back to, you know, like Mm -hmm. I really missed doing that street fair that I just did on Sunday. I mean, God, I miss doing street fairs and festivals. Those are like just, I mean, one of the great things about San Diego is we can be outside mm-hmm. and weather, I see a cat's tail in the background, the <laughs> weather is just so lovely now and it's getting mm-hmm. really nice. Um, oh, another show I've got coming up in May actually with Chuck is I'm doing uh, Gator by the Bay, another kind of New Orleans themed festival. Um, yeah. It's Mother's Day weekend and I'm playing uh, May 6th on Friday, and I'm doing a whole tribute to Little Richard. Um, oh, awesome. So it's going to be so fun. And my friend, Henry Herbert, who's an amazing boogie-woogie pianist from Austin, Texas. Well, he's from the UK, but lives in Austin. He's going to come out and play piano, and it's it's going to be amazing. So, Oh, yeah. man. That's so great. I, I, um, I put your website link in all of your social media yeah. handles and everything in the comments and also, uh, links to those shows coming up. But, um, I, it's so great to catch up with you and it's, especially with, um, there, you know, there's a handful of, um, singers that I've, you know, been so lucky to have come on, each year, you know, to do this and to, to kind of, so I can kind of see full circle how things are, are coming along. And it's so good to be sitting here, you know, with you now in this place, rather than where we started when we did our oh, first man. Year in 2020. What a, we probably year. look so much happier now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're wearing makeup again. And- That's true, right? <laughs> We're yeah. like, we're wearing clothes. We washed our hair. We went on. in yoga pants. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love it. But no, it is. It's it's great to see um, all the amazing things happening for you. You're such a hard worker. You so, so deserve it. And man, you're just talented as hell. And, and I am super proud of you. Girl, right back at you. One of these days, we're going to get to sing together. I'm hoping that's going to happen sometime soon. I do too. I really do too. Yep. That would be amazing. But you, for now, keep on keeping on. Keeping my fingers crossed for you for the um, San Diego Music Award. Um, that's exciting. Man, it feels like that's so far away, but I guess it's really not. It's like, no, it's all, girl, it's almost the end of March. How is it almost the end of March? It's crazy. Know. I don't even know anymore. But. I can't. The time just needs to stop. I can't. <laughs> it is. It's crazy. This is a crazy life, but. Thank you again. Thanks for joining me. Thank you to everybody who jumped into the comments and watched and who's watching the replay. Make sure you check out the comments and um, uh, visit your social medias. Where where do you where are you mostly on social media? I would say probably Facebook and Instagram are the okay. two ones that I'm on most. So yeah, mm-hmm. follow me on there. And there's actually I have a Facebook group. It's a Whitney Shea fan group. Mm -hmm. Um, And a lot of people interact there. So that's like, I would say a really good place. If you just want to stay up to date, what's going on. I post things. Other people post things in there. Um, It's just a cool little Facebook group that I started during COVID. And thank you to all who are like following and supporting. Like, 
I'm so lucky. Like I just, you know, sometimes when you do what we do for a living, you know, you're like, I hope people like it. And I'm just mm -hmm. lucky that I've been doing this so long. And I have so many people that have consistently come out to see me over the years. And I'm just super grateful for that. Yeah, you deserve it. You deserve it for sure. Oh, awesome. Well, I hope you have an amazing gig tonight. Thank and you. I hope to have you back on again soon. But you're right. You know what? Maybe that'll be the thing is that next time we book this, we'll do it together in the same room. Um, yes, that's the only way I'm doing it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'll do it anyway. But I want to like hang and sing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I'd love to do that. Until then, keep doing your thing. You're incredible. And thanks again to you and to everybody who stopped by tonight. I'll be back here next Wednesday. We're going back to Wednesday. Um, I had a gig last night, so we had to change dates. But then Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Bye.